What's up, what's up? Gaunt's here. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to export stems, not the other stems, but the actual sections of your entire project in studio over to another DAW, say like Ableton, where if you want to mix it down a little bit more or use other options and other DAWs to mix down your tracks, because some people want to do that. I'm going to show you guys how to do it because I keep getting questions on this and people are a little confused on how it works. So why not make a video and help help everybody out with that? So with that, let's get into it. So this is a project that I have here in studio, so like a little hip hop, little hip hop joint, little hip hop joint. So I have all my scenes, everything's ready to go. Everything's, you know, presumed there. Now, if I was going to export this to another DAW, ideally you want to get rid of like any master effects as far as on your master chain, because you're going to do that in your other DAW. So why have this on here if you're going to do all your mastering and mixing in another application? So where you go to do all this is here at the top, this little export little button here. You're going to click on that. You're going to click export audio file. This is the part that everyone gets confused on and it's okay. Um, I'm going to show you what to do. So I believe because the terminology stems and taking away and isolating parts of a song is the same word as stems taking things like basically just taking every single ingredient of your song and putting it as an individual file for your other DAW. This is where the confusion comes in because some people would presume that this stems means, oh, I'm going to export a stem from, say, a sample, meaning the acapella, vocal, melody, and drums. This is completely different from that. So this stem is different than, let's just go back to our scenes, than this stems here. This is different. And this is what trips people up. And you obviously can't see that because my goofy head is in the way. So let me just move, the, let me move that real quick. There we go. So again, because you have the stems right here, that's where the confusion comes in. So let me move my, move my chrome dome out the way back in there. There we go. So we're trying to export all of these sounds, all of these tracks here. So I'm going to go to export, export audio file. So you're going to get a couple options here. You're going to have export loop region only, which just means export the loop region of a song view, whether the loop is active or not. Basically, you can take a section and loop it. The export drum pads as individual audio files, that means... And what it says is create individual files for each drum pad, as well as one file for the whole drums deck. So some people want to have more control over every single sound. And what it's referring to is this is my drum deck right here. So if say I had all these sounds like active, it's going to make an individual track of each one of these, but also making one of the whole thing. Again, it's going to make two completely different types of files. One is going to be the whole drum deck, and the other one is each individual one of these. And this is pertaining to drum decks, not a sample sample decks here. Let's go back to here. And then this one's important too, is decrease audio output for stem files by 6 dB, meaning when you're going to bring it in to say Ableton, Logic, Pro Tools, by default, your volumes, unless you made a template, um, your volumes are going to be at zero. So what happens sometimes is when you bring in each of these individual files, you might actually clip over the zero point. So what this does, it already reduces it down negative six. So now you have headroom in your project in Ableton, Logic, what have you. So I typically in, end up checking this, um, but I'm going to show you on how I set up my template in Ableton, when I go this route, um, what's a little different than if you just open Ableton for the first time or just generally open it up, how it's set up. So other important things to do when you're going to export. 
is make sure you label the BPM. And my goofy head's in the way. There we go. 93 BPM. And you can make note of the key. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit export. I'm going to make a folder on my desktop. So the name of the track is called Moo Latte. Um, yeah, I make goofy names. I think that was the name of the sample, actually. So I'll call it that. And then I'm going to also type in the BPM and the key, D minor, and have it all like that. And what I should have did was just make an actual folder. I'm going to copy this, new folder, name it the same thing. There we go. Hit save. And now what it's going to do, it's going to create each individual stem file. So like before, when you're going to export the whole song as one file, it kind of goes through that whole deal. And of course, Google wants to update right in the middle of my video, but it's all good. It's all good. And so, again, you're going to get a collection of each track by itself. And the reason I tell you to label it with the BPM is because when you bring it into your other DAW, if you don't have it set to this to this BPM, and this is where a big problem is, you're going to be off as far as where it lines up and things are going to sound a little weird. Right now, you're probably like, well, what are you talking about? But I would definitely recommend when you make a folder for your stems is to give it the BPM. Just so even if it's not you mixing it down, your engineer knows what BPM it is. And then the reason I say to add the key is, for example, you wanted to bring in, say, like a saxophone player or a violin player. Instead of you having to go back to the project to figure out what the key is or put it into a program, say, like mixing key, you already have all the information there. So when you send, say, this whole project over to somebody, they have a clear understanding of first how fast the track is and what key the track is. So there's not this back and forth trying to figure out what information is lacking. So with this, you know exactly what's going on and it's embedded onto the file. And so with that ramble, we are almost done here. So we had the project done. I'm going to close this. Just for all purposes here, I'm going to close that out. So this is our folder right here. I'm going to open this. I'm going to open this here. So these are all the files right here. That's each individual track from the project. So everything has 93 BPM, D minor, because I told it to do it like that. Drums. Scene track is like the whole thing. So we have this information. So now I'm going to move this to the side here. Now I'm going to open up Ableton. And I'm running uh, Ableton 11. Um, there is a newer version 12, but it doesn't matter. You can use 10. It doesn't matter at all. So we have this here. I'm just going to open this a little bit more. See what's going on. So for me, I went ahead and made like a default template for myself. Um, I won't go too crazy on this. We're just trying to figure out how to bring these stems in. So generally... You're going to have this volume, say, would be at zero right here. So if I brought a track in already pretty loud, it might already be clipping. So that's why for me, I already go ahead and bring it down to, say, negative 12 or negative 6, really your preference. But I'll just keep, I'll just keep this. I'll just put negative 6 for right now. Okay. So then the next question would be, or how do I bring this in? Open this up. I'm going to select the first one. Select this one. Now, this is the part where people mess up quite a bit. I did the same thing. Instead of just letting go right now, because all the tracks are going to fall in one track, you want it to separate all of them. So what you have to do is on a Mac, you have to hold down the command key, and then it'll put it as separate tracks like that. So I'm going to let it go. So now it's all lined up. But I still have a bit of a problem 
because I'm a little off on my BPM here. So by default, normally Ableton's going to be 120, and you can see this audio move around. So now things are going to be a little off when I play this. We'll give it an example here. Doesn't sound bad. However, when we have the metronome on, you're definitely going to tell that it's off. Completely off on there. Way off. So some very important settings in Ableton that you need to turn off because you'll really experience it where all your samples are going in all different kinds of directions, meaning you might have this track like here, this track here, this track here, or even if you had this laid out at the beginning here, your waveforms are going to be like really shifted off because it's going to try to warp everything. So if you go, if you open preference, go to warp. Right here. This is a super important section. I turn all of this off because if you have auto warp long samples, it's going to try to warp everything to this tempo and it's going to sound really weird. Let me see if I can like actually do that and bring it back in. Let's see. Let me see if I can actually warp it in here. See what happens. Okay, let's see. I think it's going to be fine how I did it. But say, let me see if I can bring it all in again. I'd rather show you what could happen if we if we did it a certain way. All right, let's see if I can reenact this real quick. So command here, there we go. Whoops, I didn't mean to deactivate any of these. Deactivate, activate, deactivate. There it goes. See, now it's trying to... It's trying to sync to that. Which actually didn't do... <laughs> See how it's a crazy mess now? It's all over the place. That's generally what happens with everybody. So, that's why I tell everyone to... Turn auto warp samples off and just not worry about any of that on there. Loop short samples means if you take a very really, really small clip, say from a bar to a bar, it'll try to warp that. But because generally in your project files are going to be way longer than that, that one doesn't really bother me. It's really the auto warp long samples that is the, uh, the tricky part. So let me just start fresh with all this here. Delete that. Let me bring everything back in. Tempo is 93. So I'm going to go ahead and change this tempo to 93. 93. And then what I'll typically do is I'll either put it on bar 5 or bar 9. Reason being, it gives me a little wiggle room to where once I get everything done if i need to move it more to the left i have plenty of real estate to do that instead of putting it all the way at number one and say you wanted to add a little intro to it you don't have any space now you got to move everything over to the right so i might as well just have it set where i already have plenty of real estate so i'm going to bring this back bring this back to the top and then i'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to bar five right here let it go now we're going to hit the metronome and as you can see everything's gonna is pretty much landing right where I need it to land. So if I hit the metronome, so you can hear what's going on, you have this. Okay, everything's on point. There was one thing that you've been probably noticing is that there's this weird little phasing sound because what it also does, it makes a whole track master on top of everything else. So if I solo this, 
I'll bring this up a little bit. I'll bring these volumes up just a little bit more. So you can hear what's going on. So this is where it says scene track right here. Scene track. If I solo this, you're going to hear the whole beat. Now, the problem with that is you're going to hear phasing because it's like one whole track with all your stems. That's where you're hearing, getting this weird little phasing sound. You can hear it at the beginning. As opposed to if I turn this off, you don't hear the phasing going on. What the reason they do this is to give you like a reference track. So if you see scene track, you can right click, go to rename and put REF or reference. And what I'll typically do is just move that down. So now I have my other collection of things. Let me lower this here so you can see what's going on. And I'll move this out the way too. So now you have a clearer view of the screen. So now, if I just unmute, that, or if I mute that, which I did, now you should be able to hear everything without the phasing going on. So now you can proceed to do all your EQing and all that fun stuff. So yeah, that's how you bring stems from Serato Studio. These kind of stems from Serato Studio to say a DAW like Ableton or Logic. Again, the key takeaways is to make sure that you label your folder with the tempo that with the tempo and the key it'll make life so much easier if you do that and then some DAWs will automatically do it where if you bring multiple files it'll create separate tracks but if not um it's the windows key for pc and then it's command on mac to actually put these you know all in a, a sequential order as opposed to just being all on one track and you have it like this. Give yourself a little real estate. I put it usually on bar five. And if I need to uh, do a double check, just put, because I have it labeled here, I'm like, oh, 93 BPM. Let me make sure I'm 93 at the top. And then just turn on the metronome just to make sure everything's landing on point. Yep. And that's it. That's the That's the main thing with that. So again, if you have any issues with trying to export, hit me up. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you got any other questions, feel free to let me know. I'm here to help you guys out. Keep having fun creating, man, and enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out, everybody.